Thank you. Um, I should amend Jonathan's remarks. I'm, I'm more of a budget translator. I, I take stuff from all these wonks, and I try to make it more understandable. So uh, leading expert, I don't know, hard to say. Um, but anyway, um, I want to start with Trump's uh, rhetoric on nuclear weapons, uh, some of the less inflammatory rhetoric, just because I don't want people's blood to boil too early in the day. Um, in an interview with Reuters a while back, he said he wants to be at the top of the pack on nuclear weapons. So of course he didn't do his homework or he would know that the United States has thousands and thousands of nuclear weapons, is already at the top of the pack, which is a very dubious distinction, obviously. Um, and then he said, we've fallen behind on our nuclear capacity. Again, thousands of nukes, a plan to spend a trillion dollars over three decades building a new generation of nuclear weapons. Again, I doubt that he was aware of this. So who knows what he's got in mind, if anybody educates him about this. Um, and then the New START Treaty, he said, oh, just another bad deal that the country made, like the Iran deal. And of course, equal numbers, there's verification. You know, we would have liked to go further in terms of reductions, but it certainly is not an unfair deal. But I, I think Trump's definition of unfair deal is a deal made by Barack Obama. Um, and so, you know, we can take that with a grain of salt. But um, the next thing as context is the Trump uh, budget. Uh, I'm talking about the one for fiscal 2018, which he's going to release in detail shortly and we'll be debating for the rest of this year. Uh, and I should say, you know, the Pentagon budget is already running at about $600 billion a year, which is higher than the peak of the Reagan buildup. It's more than the next eight countries in the world combined, many of whom are U.S. allies. Uh, it's only, um, you know, the, his increase alone, $54 billion, uh, is about the size of the military budget of France, uh, larger than the budgets of the United Kingdom, Germany, Japan, and only $12 billion less than the entire military budget of Russia. So anybody who says, oh, Trump's making a small adjustment, either doesn't know what they're talking about or they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Um, and what he's planning to do, which is a little different from recent presidents, is he wants to take a dollar, a billion dollars, $54 billion out of domestic programs to match the $54 billion he wants to put in the military. Now, this is an outrage, but it's also an opportunity to build coalitions because so many people are going to be affected. Um, he's going to eliminate 19 agencies. And he's got a, a, the initial hit list of programs that they were going to get rid of included the National Endowment of the Arts, National Endowment of the Humanities, Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Legal Services for the Poor, the U.S. Institute of Peace, Planned Parenthood, AmeriCorps, the Appalachian Regional Commission works, works almost entirely in Trump country. Um, so anyway, that initial hit list is about $3 billion, which is one half of 1% of the Pentagon budget. So it's peanuts compared to the Pentagon. And it just gives you a sense of how deep they're going to have to cut on the domestic side to counterbalance this proposed buildup. Um, and some of the um, proposed cuts are, are just hard to fathom. 31% uh, cut of the Environmental Protection Agency, 29% of the State Department. This is the guy who likes to make deals. Who's going to make the deals when there's no State Department? Um, they're going to get rid of $8 billion in low-income block grants of various sorts, pay for low-income heating, uh, pay for uh, housing for the homeless, uh, pay for job training programs. That's less than the cost of one of the 12 uh, ballistic missile submarines that are part of this trillion-dollar buildup. Um, and then um, state's going to be cut 29%, but UN humanitarian programs will be cut even deeper. So at a time when we have record uh, refugee crisis, we have near famine in places like South Sudan and Yemen, uh, U.S. support for the UN in those areas is going to be cut drastically. Um, so there's plenty to debate and plenty to be outraged about and plenty to fight back about. Um, and so that's the context in which we'll be debating this nuclear weapons buildup. And I will say, the, um, they, they just finished up the fiscal 17 budget, because they, they didn't finish it last year. They let it sort of half done. And they had to figure out what they were going to do through now on September 30th. And there were some small glimmers of hope there. 
I mean, he got $15 billion of the $30 billion he wanted for the military, so that's not a good outcome. Uh, but many of the programs that he was trying to get rid of uh, were preserved. And there was an increase in spending for the National Institutes of Health. Uh, there was money for famine relief, a billion dollars. Uh, Planned Parenthood was preserved. So I think just because Trump says it doesn't mean it's going to happen. I guess that's what I'm saying. Uh, and I think we need to fight even harder against this new budget. So, um, you know, what are we getting for our trillion dollars? You know, what, what's this great deal? Uh, well, the, the nuclear warhead complex is going to get $350 billion. There's going to be 12 new submarines for $102 billion. 100 new bombers for $100 billion. New ICBMs, $120 billion. And on and on down the list. And that's without the cost overruns, which we know are going to be dramatic. Um, now, some of the companies are going to benefit include Northrop Grumman on the bomber, General Dynamics on the submarine, uh, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, Raytheon will build on the ICBM and the cruise missile. Uh, Honeywell has taken over Sandia Nuclear Weapons Lab from Lockheed Martin as of this month. Um, there's com uh, companies like Bechtel that run uh, Los Alamos National Laboratories Nuclear Weapons Lab. So uh, if you really want the full story, uh, Susie Snyder's here with uh, Bank on the Bomb. If you go to Bank on the Bomb's webpage, they have a couple dozen companies involved in producing nukes, details of the contracts. It's a handy little guide of kind of the doomsday corporations. Now, um, I don't have a lot of time left, but I'll say two things. One is, even at these huge levels of spending, the Pentagon can't afford everything it wants. I'll, I'll give the bomber as an example. The Air Force wants to buy the F-35 combat aircraft, the most expensive weapons program in history. Uh, they want to buy a new tanker. They want to buy a new training aircraft. They want to buy new drones. And then they also want to fit in $100 billion for a bomber. So there's going to be some fights, even within the military-industrial complex, about whose ox gets gored. They're not going to be rowing in the same direction. And those divisions could work to our advantage. Now, uh, my final point is, uh, you know, a trillion dollars kind of makes your eyes glaze over, because who, who knows what that is? But um, the Future of Life Institute has this fun little tool where you can go shopping for different things until you spend your trillion dollars. So I went shopping. I hate shopping. Um, but I went shopping. And um, so 100 million school lunches is $235 million. 10,000 high school science teachers, $553 million. Salvage and protect all of our Superfund sites for a year, $681 million. Planned Parenthood for a year, $528 million. Health insurance for a million families, $16.8 billion. End homelessness for a year, $20 billion. Fix all our deficient bridges, $71 billion. So as I said, I hate shopping, so I got kind of exhausted. Um, but that was only 10% of the trillion, all of those things. But there was another good idea, uh, which was burn a $1 million pile of cash every hour for 30 years, <laughs> $262 billion, which is a far better investment, I think you have to admit, than a trillion dollars on nuclear weapons, because we'll be a lot safer. As long as you stay you know, away from the fire. Um, so. That's mainly what I had to say. I guess the other thing I'll say, because uh, I, I think I'm probably uh, near the end of my time, is these companies can be beaten uh, on issues like the F-22 combat aircraft, uh, the B-2 bomber, uh, various other programs. Even though they pushed, they used their contributions, they used the jobs argument, we were able to uh, curtail or sh uh, cut back very lucrative programs. Uh, working with some of the organizations that help sponsor this conference. So I don't think we should just assume that the military industrial complex is 10 feet tall, uh, because I think if we get enough people mobilized, uh, we can beat them. And I, I wouldn't be doing this work if I didn't believe that. Thank you. <laughs>